All right, good evening, guys. Welcome to another episode of Three Comic Money. This week we are we have the pleasure of having comic book artist, cover guy, uh, Koi Fam here, who does. If you haven't seen some of his stuff, he's been pumping out some great variants here lately. Um, uh, a lot of stuff for Marvel, but he's he's been around. He's been doing some stuff for years, uh, and he's going to be playing the game with us. And then and then we'll also get to do a little interview and everything with him. Of course, we have the fellows here with us, Mike Morello and P, uh, Peter Rena, who who've been on the show before. Um, and uh, Corey, we've been uh, sort of went over the rules before. You get to be the guest, so you get to pick the first card awesome. and sort of start us off here. <laughs> yes, yeah, and welcome. Yeah. And yeah, welcome to the show. Yeah, happy to be here, guys. I'm excited. I'm nervous. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just relax and just it, like I said, it, this is a game. I'm the only one who knows where the card is hidden. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Let's go with uh, let's go with number two. Okay, what you got, Mike? Uh, number one. I'll do three. It is number Ooh, three. I can do three. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Three. Face to face. So that, that's actually what wasn't that the back nine, one of our favorite ones from the back nine? That's one of yeah, that's that's a book I wish I had, man. I don't <laughs> have one of that's that's always the one the, from that <laughs> I got the reprint. That's what I got. Oh, so, you got the, oh, the reaper. I right. put the fantasy masterpieces because it's the only one I get. Oh, oh, still though, it's a good way to get the cover. I mean, considering that's classic because oh, exactly. of the cover, that's a cool yeah. way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I dig that. So I decided to, face to face is one of those tricky ones. Trying to think, okay, do I go with battle covers every time, or do I? So I just sort of went with how I'm cheating slightly because I'm going with some beautiful Del Autos. Oh yeah, I can't go wrong. Oh, oh yeah, but especially issue one. If you look in the reflection, you're talking to make out face to face straight on Wolverine Domino, and then yeah. you take it into issue two. And I mean, when I think of face to face, you can't get much closer than that without licking her skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just a gorgeous, I would love the second prints of these, but I mean, this is just a beautiful series. There's three issues in the run. Uh, the third issue, uh, for some reason, I have two sets of number one and two, but I don't have number three at all. Those are, it's a great cover. Uh, Del Otto, that, the, his X Men stuff is just fabulous. It's and they well. reused that cover for uh, for Domino, one of the Domino uh, mm -hmm. variants. I don't know if it was a store yeah. variant or what, but they got the rights to use that art again. So it's, it's been on the market twice. It's a beautiful cover. Yeah, his work is great. Big fan. All right, Corey, let's see what you got. All right, I have your picks. I'll share your first pick. Yes. So, this is the one. <laughs> right. This is, this is the one I thought of. Whenever I think of uh, covers that... <laughs> You know that that got me. This is one of them because it's um it's it's when you do covers, right? And I learned this after the fact. That when you do covers, you usually relate to the audience by having the characters look at the reader, right? Like eye contact with the reader as one of the yeah. characters in place. So I'm always looking for ways to like bend those rules. You know what I mean? And this is one where they're not looking at you, but it's still just as powerful, still just as engaging. Right, yeah. Now, yeah. Especially like the, the closer it is, it's like you're like in the fight. You're just trying to get out of the way. So it's like a, it's like a, a car crash kind of feel. You know what I mean? Like I'm watching something like brutal, and I really should back up. But, but mm -hmm. I just love being so close to it. You know. So this is why I like these really face to face, and it's very. I mean, it's the epitome of conflict, right? That's why we read these stories. It's it's what are the conflicts, right? And in this cover, Alan Davis and Paul Neary, it's like we got Wolverines. He's he's physically battling Sabretooth, right? But then you know it's got this internal struggle to not go crazy, not go berserk, right? And, and no. you see it in this cover. So to me, it's like, like this, is, this is the definition of conflict, right? This is why I'm, I'm reading this book. Yeah. So that, that's why I chose this topic. I just love that, that, that conflict, right? Yeah, so, that's a good one. Shoot, Peter, yeah, that's, that's what, isn't he, that, those are like your favorite covers from the run too, like some of them. I put it behind me. I got the, <laughs> but I didn't pick it. All right, Mike. It's the first one to come to mind. So I, I stole. All it. right. 
<laughs> so so uh, a creature of a creature of habit I, I could not not go <laughs> with this this is a weird one i was trying to go a, a little off kilter so amazing hero swimsuit special red <laughs> sonia versus gita of alazar frank thorne uh, you guys know I love Frank Thorne. I love Red Sonia. Um, and this is a, sort of a face-off between the two characters that he drew. Um, he's obviously famous for drawing Red Sonia. But um, but then when he was done with Red Sonia, actually concurrent with Red Sonia, I think he got a little upset that he had to draw Red Sonia clothed all the time. So in Heavy Metal Magazine, he came up with essentially a blonde version of Red Sonia that he could disrobe at times if he wanted to uh and that's gita of alazar so she's really sort of like naked red sonia but she's blonde um but either way it's the two characters that she's that he's known for um i love his art um i particularly love that cover it's sort of an unknown one for for frank thorne red sonia so and i didn't think any of you fools would choose it so never, <laughs> no, never seen that not picking amazing heroes <laughs> but look at that you know like, yeah. Why yeah. Are they so, what are they fighting about, right? Yeah, although there's a little bit of like, oh, yeah, uh, there's, some, there's some love going on there. There's definitely yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. her face. It looks like she's going oh, she, she's definitely cupping, cupping the chin for the, yeah. the, the, the lip lock there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. That's Frank. All right. So, oh, I better uh, make mine uh, large here. All right. So, before I get to my first pick, I will say I did think about different ways to look at this topic too, because we went with the face. I thought yeah. it was like more of a face-off, but the face-to-face. -face, I mean, you look at this uh, Superman, yeah. Batman, they're That's not really it. fighting, but, you know, head-to-head -head kind yeah. of thing. And then even this recent Jim Lee, you know, Batman, yeah. Catwoman. They're face-to-face, -face, but it's more of a loving kind of face-to-face, -face, I guess you would say. Yeah. Or yeah. my actual pick. Uh, that's a nice spin on it, I mean, for both Peter and Michael, right? It's, it's still face-to-face, -face, but... It's not just anger and conflict, right? Sometimes it's connection, which is yeah. that's cool I too. Would, going to go that way, but I did decide to go with the anger and conflict <laughs> angle and I actually made my pick. <laughs> but sticking with the Jim Lee, I went with this Punisher War Journal from yeah. back in the day. Oh, yeah. I just, I'm a big Jim Lee fan, so yeah. Wolverine, Punisher, going head-to-head. -head. I uh, I wanted to work this one in because, again, just a good cover. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to find because, again, I, I do the Dollar Bin article, so I look for cheap things that you might be able to find, and that's one you can find. Like in a dollar bin, so I want to have at least one cheapie thrown in there if I can. Good, that's good. You guys are going uh, uh, obscure, deep, deep dive here. I like oh that. yeah, we we like to we like to try to one up ourselves with not with how much it costs, but uh, how rare and obscure it might be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this this might upset Mike that I'm I'm going uh, with two women on the cover and they're in chains, uh, but Wonder Woman and. Ah. It's a great, it's her second appearance. Uh, shoot, Mike, help me. What's her name? Nubia? Nub How do you say her Nubia? name? I think it's Nubia. Nubia. But it's a great cover. You can see them face to face. And then, of course, you have the giant face right in the middle. But uh, and you have, they're in chains. Gorgeous cover. Sadly, I actually thought this was her first appearance. And then I realized it was the issue right before this one. But um, it's I love it. It's actually pretty good condition. I mean, this is a white cover, so it's so hard to get in really great condition. But uh that that Wonder Woman run, uh, this is a Nick Cardi cover, which he does. Uh, I mean, he's one of those guys who we've talked about before on the show. He's he's not as well respected as Neil Adams is at the time and um, some of the other ones, but he's great, writes in and all of them. But Cardi's definitely like sometimes I, I get confused and think it's a it's a Cardi and it's actually an Adams or vice versa. So okay. I'm sort of Garcia Lopez in there. Yeah. So let's see. All right. Four. Second pick. I got you queued up here with Thor 126. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, uh, this one is, um, it's been homage infinite number of times, right? Mm -hmm. And it really is. And again, it's, I really like that. Like, am I too close to the bow, right? Like, the, these covers always grab me. And there's a reason why this one's been done. And I, I've actually done it a few times. Um, you know, I have to do, do, co do covers based on this a few times, too. It is. Um, Again, it, it is right there, and it's a classic. It's Kirby. You know, can't go wrong. Someone, someone's got to pick Kirby, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is it, this is a uh, first Aries? No, first Pluto. Isn't it one of those guys? No, that's in the annual right before. Yeah, and it's a Hercules cover. I, 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 I heard my boy Hercules. So. Oh yeah, because yeah, you did 
when did you you did uh how much of the hercules run did you do like incredible hulk hercules little... yeah i did uh i don't know i want to say like a year i mean i did the hercules i did the chaos war stuff oh that's did, right that's the greg pock run greg pock fred van lenty with hercules i love that run yeah and and um and paul neary inked me which is awesome because he, he inked alan davis on that first cover where he looked at so it's oh, like nice. I, I looked at this alan davis cover inked by paul neary as a kid and here i am and i'm drawing hercules with, with paul <laughs> neary ink it was, it was real trippy so when did you get your start Ooh, I don't know. Uh, my first start, my first book was um, "What If Spider-Man: The Other." You know, like the the, the oh. with the with the Marvel <laughs> cover, and it's poison. Right? I have it right here behind me in the box. I can reach it. in a minute. I'll pull it out to show the cover. <laughs> That's my first published work ever. Right? I was like, oh man, if can you sign it through the camera? Come on. No. Yeah. <laughs> so we, so we created uh, Peter David was uh, awesome guy. And then I jumped over with Peter David to do X Factor. Um, yeah, X Factor, right. I can't remember anymore. But yeah, so uh, that was my first book ever, like of anybody. Oh, wow. Nice. I, I love that because it, especially it, it all of a sudden became popular uh, about three, no, yet last year, two years ago when Venomverse, and they brought up the poison. This, uh, yeah. the, the, He's in the video game, apparently, right? So it's yeah. like, this guy that is totally obscure. And then, uh, <laughs> But isn't there another Marvel character named Poison too? I mean, you do a quick Google search, and there's a female character from Marvel too. So uh, they gotta work. Mm. It, they gotta work it out, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, and the poisons in the Venomverse, they took them and made like a bunch of them, and they were like the ant, Venom and the symbiotes didn't get along. They're like white versions, evil. Um, there's a I, I, of course, everything. Everyone loves Venom and everything Venom right now. But is this, this is actually before. Hmm? Is this part of the Kate Stegman run? This is just before it. Just um, edge of Edge of Venomverse. Um, oh, that will right. run. They had the poison oh, in the poison oh, covers. Okay, go find it then. That's neat. That's cool. <laughs> so, all right, Marilla, what you got? All right, Coy, we were on the same page, man, because I went boom. Yeah. Oh, exactly. so, 118, uh, just again, the same kind of thing. Just so much Kirby action. And this is the first destroyer in this book. Um, it's, it's got that same feel as the Hercules one. It's not quite as close up. It's a little bit further back. Um, and, and it, it depends on the cover. Sometimes I like that better. Sometimes I like the close up better. In this case, I, yeah. I just sort of like the feeling, the movement, the, the motion of it. Um, I sort of yeah. see the fluidity and sometimes, um, sometimes I lose that with Kirby when it's super up close. Um, and other times I like really up close because I like that sort of that energy, that yeah. sort of visceral feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's and this, a great point. But yeah. this one's uh, this one's sort of along those same lines. Honestly, there are so many Thor covers that we could have all chosen three Thor covers, and yeah. there still probably would have been. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is this is one of my favorites. I also like that it happens to be sort of a mini key. Um, although I don't necessarily care about that. I love the art on it. I love the motion and the fluidity of it. So that's why I chose it. Yeah, that's a good call because it's really great with bulky character, right? Yeah. Yes. Because it suggests yeah. like a crowdedness, and they're just fighting for that space on that cover. Yep. Right. So it, it oh yeah. What about the big guys? What is it? One sixty-five. Uh, Thor and him. Yes. Or right. that's a no. One sixty-five fighting is, cover. That's not the fighting one. One sixty-five is the one. The, where one sixty-six is the one right after. Yep. One right yeah. after it. But I do have to say, I, I pulled it out. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's Koi's oh, first work right man. there. That, that's uh, one of Mark Brooks's early works too. I think. Mark Brooks. So. Did, Mark Brooks did that Spider Man. Nice. Oh wow! I didn't even realize that. I just—I yeah. mean, I love the uh, the Churious Man, the Da Vinci sort of feel to it, yeah. and then, but yeah, and that's a hard one. It's not—it's not super easy. Those what ifs are sort of hard to find from this little era when they came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was that was fun. That's awesome. Like you know, you break it in. The first guy you work with, Peter David. Ah, yeah. not so bad. <laughs> not not at yeah. all. I mean, he wasn't a hero of the '80s and '90s for his, his story writing. <laughs> they got, got me like when I. I would get his scripts, and I would just crack up. Like, it, <laughs> it, it's, he's, he's a funny guy. Like his scripts really crack me up. So it was really fun to work. Even before I start, like, put start sketching a drawing, it's just like this. I, I got to read this script because it is hilarious. Every so does scene. he flesh it out for you? Like, does he say, "Hey, I want this guy on this panel," or do you get like free reign with Peter David, like to draw? So, so Peter is pretty. He he's your um, he's your standard. He's a standard, right? So you get your. You get enough information. You, he knows what he wants, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, he keeps the fight scenes pretty loose. He gives a general guideline of how to choreograph the fight, but it's generally, um, it's, it's, it's what I mean, right? It's, it's, it's everything that I want and it's good, right? Somebody like uh, Bendis would just give you, it's like this thick, right? It's just, <laughs> but, but, ben, but Brian's like, hey, you know what? I give you more than what you need. It, use it, don't use it. And that's great too. Right, but for a while when I was working with Dan Slott, we were we started doing a little bit of the Marvel met, uh, the Marvel. Wait, you said Bendis? You mean this run? Yeah, that run exactly. That was a fun <laughs> run too. The Mighty Avengers run. Uh, yeah, yeah. Secret yeah. Invasion. Yeah, yeah. So that that was that was um, so yeah. So was, so Peter is probably somewhere in the middle, right? Like what what okay. what, what, what you would think about when you think of a, a comic script. Hmm. What, really, do you, what do you what do you like? What do you like better? Do you like? Do you like getting more direction or less direction? Uh, and like, do you want to be on camera admitting that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I retract the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. I, I, depends, right? Depends on depends on the characters, depends on the stories. But generally, um, starting out, it was more, right? But, mm. but at this point in my career, it's just like. I can I can do my job, so you don't have to give me yeah. chance. <laughs> yeah. Right. But it's also cool. Like, oh, this is a Bendis script. I'm holding a Bendis <laughs> script. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, so what Brian would do is he would uh, cut and paste like, you know, like every time you read an X-Men back in the day with Claremont, and every time Wolverine showed up and Wolverine, laced with adamantium claws and power, like it goes through the whole well, well Brian yeah. would cut and paste descriptions for all his characters too. <laughs> and then, oh, then wow. that's why it's so damn thick, because it's just like copy and paste. So uh, that's awesome. I guess that makes sense. Uh, like, cause like his characters definitely had a feel, even when they switched artists, like they still had that feel cause he was writing mighty Avengers and new Avengers at the same time. Yeah. And you know those... what? You always got that excitement, right? Like mm -hmm. I got the script. I talked to Brian. Just, he's just so excited and, and happy to be doing what he's doing. And, Man, that, that, that's contagious, right? So you yeah. have a lot of fun to put yeah. that way, too. All right, Peter, what you got for your second book? Oh, uh, no, let's try. I'm up. All right. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'm going to kind of stick with your guys' theme that you guys started with Thor books. So yeah, I got another one. Uh -oh. But it's not Thor's book, but he happens to be on the cover. I have this Cable and X-Force variant that is kind oh. of like a play on the Silver Surfer Thor uh, Oh man, Who battle. Is that Jordan. Esad? Who's that? This one, I can't. I can't see the signature on the front, but it's definitely more of like a painted style. Yeah. I don't know if it's the. Looks like a ribbage. It could be, and I want to say that's who it is, but I'll look inside the middle. Your cover art. Oh, Laraca and uh, D Armada. That's actually oh, okay. Laraca. So yeah, yeah, I'll show show it up there again. I think this is. I don't remember the uh, the ratio, but this is a ratio variant of some kind for this cable book. It does look, he's right yeah. though. It does look like Isad Ribbit though. It do, that's why yeah. I was going to say it, but I didn't see a signature, so I didn't want to say it without looking. But yeah. Is, yeah. You know, no, it says cool. very covered by Ribbit. Oh, it is? It is a, okay. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah, covered by Ribbit. Cover. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to go to my comic shop to <laughs> yeah. figure it out. Well, <laughs> I couldn't do it while I was showing, but yeah. So Peter, I went that way. <laughs> so, but yeah, both excellent artists. Both Laraka and, and Ribbit. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go track. with last last book here. Uh, <laughs> one that we, we've been talking about a lot on CBSI. Yeah. Uh, the art itself is uh, not maybe my favorite, but this book, just because I like Star Wars, but this book is yeah. uh, Knights of the Old Republic number eight. The story is great. I don't know if, if you guys have been reading through the Knights of the Old Republic as when Mandalorian came out, but this one is the first appearance of Demogol. Uh, who is like the tort? Mike can correct me if I'm, I think it's the torturer of the Mandalorian army. Like he's the inc right. Grand Inquisitor, and he and so like there's some later on in the series. There's some gorgeous covers. Issue 42 and 48 are just ridiculously beautiful covers. But this is issue eight is his first appearance, and you get the face to face. You get the the struggle. I mean, it, it's it's also the stuff you love and hate about the Dark Horse Star Wars books. Sometimes you're just like, man, I feel like a middle schooler drew some of these faces. Um, but they're actually like so. The story inside is great. I loved. I loved reading. I love some of the stories behind it. Uh, but yeah, towards the later end of Dark Horse, 
you know, obviously they were struggling with print runs and stuff. I'm assuming they weren't asking the big boys to do their art anymore, especially for covers. I mean, the Dave Dorman days were over, you know, they weren't asking Drew Struzan to do stuff. I mean, I'm assuming they were trying to get less expensive artists to do covers. So as a result, some of them are not so hot there at the end. <laughs> yeah. Was that, yeah. Well, well, being, being on the, um, the other side of the printer, mm -hmm. so to speak, it's, um, uh, it's, uh, sometimes you get orders like, Hey, I need this cover tomorrow. Oh, oh yeah. So so uh, sometimes it's what you see isn't the artist's best work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because it's just because of the process, right? Like yeah. somebody else, somebody bailed on this cover, and you might come in and pinch hit it. And it's like, I don't know well, the case. And he, but, uh, the guy, Brian Ching is a cover artist, and he did the cover for Nine, which is a gorgeous cover. So you, you, I think you're right. I th I think it's one of those he got he got told, hey. Right. We got these three books are coming out in the next, and I, yeah. we need it. We need covers for them. Because um, yeah. I know so I, artists, mm -hmm. are, every book would be six months late, right? Because it's like, <laughs> but sometimes, yeah. but you, you know what? It's 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 um it's 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 teamwork, right? Sometimes Michael Jordan's got a bad night. He's got yeah. to step it up, right? So sometimes the writer's off, sometimes the penciler's off, and it just moves it around. So, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, that's that, that series. Work. The writing, that series is still great, though. That Night Seal Republic. Jan, was still, Jan still writing? Did she write that Dursma? Am I getting her name right? I'm Dursma was doing it for a long time. I don't know if I'm not sure. Yeah. You, you have it right there. This should say yeah. on the cover, no? Uh, actually, this doesn't have it. Oh, it's Miller Weaver and Etia Jackson. Uh, John Jackson Miller is a writer. Brian Ching, he's also the interior. Or no, uh, Dustin Weaver is the artist on the inside. Yeah. Michael Atihe is the says C, okay. and then Brian Ching was the cover. Yeah, I've always wanted to get into Star Wars. Um, I liked. Uh, I bought a couple books of the Cynthia Martin run, the mm. original Marvel Star Wars, but I really haven't followed since then. But I know the newer stuff is just amazing. Apparently, I've, I've done like already a handful of Afra commission. Oh yeah, yeah. Doc. Yeah, doc, Dr. Afra or Afra? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really need to get caught up on her because apparently she's really cool, right? So yeah, she's a hot character right now. Yeah, yeah. So so you said you did a handful of her covers? No, I just she's, 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 I, I gauge the popularity of characters based on what kind of commission requests I get. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Or, <laughs> I guess she's the the new hot thing, so that's cool. Yeah. Is it, is that weird to be asked to draw artists uh, characters that you you're not known for drawing? Uh, no, it's not. Actually, it's pretty, um, I, uh, it's not weird for me, and I, and I think it's pretty common for people to, to ask for characters. I mean, I, I get a ton of Hercules, I get, I get a ton of those things, uh, too, but, um, but I, I think, like, if I were to ask a request of somebody, uh, Mignola, right, obviously, I want to get a Hellboy in there, but I also want his take on my favorite character. Right? Oh, okay. see a Mignola take on... <clears throat> I don't know, I'm not too many characters in my head. Like Spider Man. I don't know. Has he ever done Spider Man? I don't think I've ever seen a Mignola Spider Man. Uh, he did a Spider Man Dracula cover, I think. No, that's okay. Madura. But yeah, you're right. He doesn't do. Um, no. Yeah. I can't think yeah. of one. Exactly. So so I, I would ask any artist that I follow to just. I want to see your take on this character. If I wanted your take on that character, I could just buy the book. Right? Yeah, I just yeah. ask everybody to draw me Red Sonia all the time. <laughs> exactly. so I don't really care. If exactly, you can draw, right? you can draw a pretty lady. You can draw Red Sonia. Ready, go. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So, but yeah, but, but what I tell people is, um, I like drawing the character that I haven't drawn yet. Right, it's always okay. a challenge to me, and especially give me the the, the D listers from back in the day. Yeah. I, I was not a fan. I'm still not a fan, but I get it when it comes to translating to movies and TVs. But yeah. I'm not a fan of updating costume. Right. To, yeah. to me, I'm I'm a huge Alex Ross guy. Yeah. He doesn't yes. change the costume, but it still looks awesome. Like, I could have imagined yeah. an Alex Ross character standing outside and not thinking that guy looks dorky, right? I'm thinking <laughs> that, that guy looks awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that, that, that's how I like to approach it. I don't want I don't want to tweak with a classic. I just want to clean it up, all right, and yeah. make it work now. Yeah, right? like I, I recall <laughs> your. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think you did a. Uh, I don't have the book here beside the Mighty Avengers. You did a, one of the covers of Scarlet Witch. Or not and the interiors. It's just it's that classic look of what she looked like, and it's yeah, just a great, great yeah. image. And I'm just like, okay, I see what you're talking about. Instead of trying to 
make her modernized. This is what she looked like back on uh, Avengers 47 from the right. 70s. And this right. is what she looks like today in 2007. Yeah, they asked me to redesign a Quicksilver, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, I don't, I don't want to mess with these classic costumes. All I did was put a belt on them and changed it to green, right? <laughs> Otherwise, it's still like, I don't, I don't want to mess with this. That silver streak has got to be there. Like, what yep, so, yeah. so to me, I basically, the idea with Quicksilver is, like, his dad was crazy militant, right? So green, right? It's kind of like <laughs> a little more militant, like soldierish. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, tie that to, to Magneto a bit, right? Gotcha. That, was my, that was my decision. That's all I did. Just changed the game. <laughs> so I'm not messing with a classic. I like the classics. Yeah, but at least that has. I mean, that has, there's some basis there. Like you, you thought that you thought that decision through, and if you have yeah. to explain it to somebody, they can't argue with that. You're like, oh man, that's really cool. What a good idea. Right, right. <laughs> so right, that's what I was like. Yeah, makes sense. So yeah. Yep. All right. Let's see what your third book was. And I'm gonna preface it. I absolutely love this this choice, and I love this cover too. I'm mad I didn't pick it. <laughs> oh. Yes. Yes. Right. I didn't remember I picked this, but I know it's like, of course. Yeah, it's, of course. it's great. Of course. I, I, I don't even have to talk about this one. It's so perfect. Nope. Right. Mike <laughs> Zach, so. like, yeah, oh, it's just great. I mean, it, it's like it's like that Sabretooth Wolverine one to me was like, wow, how do you top this? And then, and then, then I see this later. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this came out after. Right? I'm pretty sure this is. Yeah. I don't remember, but yeah, they're close to they're close they're to close each other right? though. Yeah, but this this to me is like, yeah, this 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 is this is the face to face, right? Yeah, they both look like they're 86. So yeah, close. I was buying a lot of comics in 86. <laughs> yeah, this and this is one of those that. I mean, it's because we're a speculation side and we talk about cost of books. It's worth something because of the cover. I mean, it's like the, there's a good story, but it's people want that book that people want 213 that you had the, uh, the X-Men book that you had at the beginning because of the cover. It's worth five, ten dollars, twenty dollars more because yeah. of the art alone. Like yeah. to me is like for you guys as artists, like to do something on a cover that people want and they crave and that they're going to want. I mean. Like I know, I mean, you guys get paid the either the same. You just get paid a flat rate, but I think that's really cool that Zach has this cover. This is one of the, his most sought after covers. This uh, yeah. that has nothing significant happen in it. Yeah, um, yeah, just yeah. that. It's, it's, and, it's, and it's an annual too, so it reminds me of Mike's work with the GI Joe stuff. Oh yeah, me and Osmond and GI Joe. Every time I'm gonna geek out for his annual every year, you know, every year, <laughs> right? So. But it's the same thing, like his like uh, his Snake Eye, Storm Shadow, uh, Scarlet, right? Like, mm -hmm. he's, he's, just, he's just like the king of the annuals for me. So that, that I had to pick that one. Yeah, no, it's a great pick. I, I love that cover. You ready, Mike, for your last pick? I, I am. I'm, I'm actually debating between three the whole time. I can't believe somebody hasn't chosen one of the cover. I'm not going to use it because, Peter, I think you are saving it to last. I so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go with it. I'm not going to go with that. I was going to go with one of my cover tunes favorites, which is this anthro. It's so oh, yeah. sexist, though, that I don't think I could really talk about it without getting in some trouble. It's all like hair pulling and anthro sitting back there and kind of just chilling, eating a, eating a uh, <laughs> like drumstick. But So I went with another classic cover instead. Um, the reintroduction um, here, uh, Catwoman in uh, uh, Lois Lane number 70. Um, this is the Silver Age appearance, and it's just it's just a it's just a sort of a classic book that people try to get their hands on because nobody could get her real first appearance from the Golden Age, which costs like many thousands. So this is usually the yeah. one people go for instead. Um, yeah, I can never say this right. Kurt Schaffenberger cover. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right or not. Um, but either way, first Silver Age Catwoman reappearance, if you will. There's also Batman and Robin, and I think the Penguins in this one too. So just uh, yeah, just sort of a girly fight. Interesting. No, I wasn't leaning that way. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I held back the book that I think you're going to choose, and I'm ready to hold it up. I, I, I'm curious what book. you think I'm going to choose. I've kind of tipped well, my yeah. hand a little bit with what I'm going to choose <laughs> because – I'm wearing it on my shirt. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> new team versus old team. That's where I was going with this. Like, yeah, new team versus old team going head to head. 
And like I said, I was trying to tip it. Granted, the shirt's kind of faded up here for some reason, but uh, I was trying to figure out like what happened to the men part of your X Men shirt. <laughs> I don't know why it happened like that, but that's how I got the shirt. But that's the way I went with this one. What did you think I was going to pick? Nobody went with this. I can't believe nobody I went with Dana Ray. Before. Well, it's an old, isn't that like an homage to that Hercules cover? It looks like it is. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. <laughs> But with Kate's run right now and, and, yeah, yeah. and, and Beta Ray being like, uh, sorry, spoiler alert, I guess, uh, part of the story, I'll just leave it at that. I just figured somebody would have this on their radar right now, but whatever. That's fine. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of glad nobody chose it. Yeah. There that, it is. <laughs> no, I did not go with a whole that. show on homages to that cover. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. Based on that. No, we, that uh, would be great. That would be fun, actually. <laughs> we actually have it. We have a like an occasional article pops up of just random homage covers, and our the guy who writes Ben C who writes it. You're just like, I never would have connected. And then you're like, this is from the golden age, 1942, and then the, here's the homage to 1947, and then here's the homage in 1975. Yeah. And you're like, I never made all those connections. I thought 1975 was the first time it was done. Like, yep, yep. It's like a kid listening to a cover song today, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, I was uh, so, thinking um, the, as an X-Men, that was the, the Juggernaut versus Colossus when uh, Wolverine and they're, they're at a bar and then Juggernaut just walks in and then it's like, <laughs> but I don't know if they're technically face to face. I think one of their heads is turned. So that's why. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you sort of see behind me, I mean, I have, here's Iron Fist 14, Sabretooth versus, it's funny, it's like Sabretooth and Wolverine are like all of my face to face. Yeah. Two that I almost homage each other. We got there's a X Men Deadpool or X Force, yeah, and like you got the, the exact same cover Wolverine Ten. <laughs> I, I never would have put these two together until you said face to face. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's Wolverine and Thor will probably take up fifty percent of the face oh, yeah. covers. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I stayed away from the Wolverine covers, figuring Peter would choose them all. Yeah. No, I <laughs> gave you my Wolverine with the first one, and then after that, I I tried to lay off. Yeah. So, but it's like an idea of like that close up fighting, though. It's got like John Wick style, like today, like yeah. the way action is kind of filmed that zoomed in, puts you right yep. in the middle of it. I do like it. Like with your first pick, like that's that's what I got. Like when you said that, like it's yeah. like made me think, like John Wick, like you're right in there. Yeah. Yeah. So you've yeah, told you us a little bit of that choice. <laughs> yeah. So you've told us a little bit about what how you got started and everything. So then you rolled into and you worked with Bendis and you did the the Incredible Hulk. Uh, Herc, it, did you start with the Incredible Hulk, the end of the World War Hulk, or did you pick up where so, I did? Could... So, so what happened was, uh, what was it? Um, they were, uh, when I started working, it was like, uh, what do I draw? You can do a Spider-Man book, but it's not Spider-Man, right? It's the what, the what if Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Then they're like, yo, okay, so you're going to do, I sat down with Mark Panicchio and uh, it was going to have been, Nate Cosby, and my, we're sitting down and they're talking, okay, we're gonna, we want you to draw Hulk, right? But I'm like, this is exciting, but Hulk's <laughs> not gonna be in it. Like, Hulk. <laughs> but, uh, but that was neat. So, um, yeah, so, well, sorry, what was your question, Chris? It just reminded me. So, you that. just, so you picked up at the end of War, War Roll Hulk was done and you, it went switched into War, and the Incredible Hercules. It's like switched, they picked, it kept the numbering from World War Hulk. Or, yeah. sorry, Incredible. It kept the number right. Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hercules. So and then, like, 112, it became Incredible Hercules. Correct. Yeah, because they launched Hulk into space, but they wanted to keep the book going. Yeah. So, uh, it was it was a crazy experiment, but it was it was a lot of this. Again, it's those guys are I, funny, right? I like, like the run. I didn't know I was going to. I was like, Hercules, huh? Wanted yeah. Hulk. It was it Hercules, but Amadeus Cho and Hercules was a great Airing, like, but that formula was great going to his like his labor or 12 labor whatever, whatever the number was right and it just kind of like mm -hmm. like attaching it and uh, associating it to like a modern thing he's going through and going through the hercules history like that's neat that's how you do a mythological character yeah in the Marvel universe right mm -hmm. that's the first time i think i've ever seen it where they actually get into the the actual mythology of it yep. so i thought that was really neat the way uh greg and fred did that it was I mean, it's a great little series. If you if you if you guys haven't read it, it's one of those fun ones to pick up. Shoot, pick up. If you haven't started Planet Hulk, start there ninety two, and then go all the way through into the Incredible Hercules. All that entire stuff is just great read. Uh, 
and everything. And then, of course, you're doing the Mighty Avengers. You're helping with the secret. You did one or two. Did you do one or two covers within that as well? I think like 23 or like it was sort of a random like Jervik and uh, different guys were doing them. And then all of a sudden you did a cover while you were doing the inside. Yes. Uh, so I jumped in with uh, Brian and I think George Bush was already doing, uh, I mean, it's so long, I don't remember. George Bush was doing a bunch <laughs> of the, like homage type covers. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's what Marco was doing. And then uh, I think I didn't, don't, I think I only started doing covers when Brian handed off to Dan. Okay. But I don't think I did invasion covers, but, but afterwards I was doing the siege covers and, and that mm, stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't remember if I did invasion, but I do know that when Dan was on, we were into the siege stuff. Gotcha. Oh yeah, because that was the entire took. That was a, basically the, it went from being a uh, Avenger story to being a Spider Man story and Dark Reign and all that Norman Osborn stuff that uh, Dan Slott yeah. had been doing. Yeah, and the, and then the Mighty Avengers became um, Hank Pym's book. Oh yeah, which right. was uh, which was a lot of fun. I was like, I, I wish he didn't have the history that he had because I, I was really proud of what we did. Me and Dan did uh, in, in the crew and. Um, uh, on that book right and uh, that was again like design is costume yeah so it's like i want a classic but i want a lab so it's like even kind of like a, a tail but it sort of looks like a wasp because he was going by that name so it's kind of like i was thinking like uh what's that uh neil patrick harris Do dr horrible is oh, oh yeah yeah, horrible. yeah. So I was trying to put a little bit of dr horrible in there with the goggles <laughs> a little unstable you know what I mean? <laughs> So that, that was a lot of fun designing him, and he was great to draw. And, and Dan was having fun writing it. But, but that, you know, like the, the the whole universe shifted, so we had to move it around yeah. a bit. But yeah, that was a lot of fun too. To... Yeah, oh yeah, because that was a sort of now is a controversial issue <laughs> uh, story. Some of that stuff, but yeah, uh, yeah. Oh well, but it's still fun. It was good. Yeah. And you've been doing some variants for you said. I mean. When we were mentioning the variant earlier, you said you have a few coming sort of down the pipeline. What else do you have coming um, that you might be able to talk to us about? What's what's that? What can we well, be enticed for? Well, I, was, I don't know. I, 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 we, I've done a lot, but then the, the pandemic, you know, then it's mm -hmm. like things are getting shelved. But I think all the variants I did are coming out. Okay. Like, I know that a lot of them got canceled, but I think the ones I did. So you got the, uh, the Fantastic Four one. There's... I don't even know. I know I did a couple of the Empire ones. Um, I, I, I just, it's, it's one of those where I'll just say, hey, man, we need to cover it by like next Wednesday. So it's like, all right. Well, <laughs> you know, I don't even, it's hard to even keep track, right? Sometimes it's just. just well, now they're going to probably do that a lot, trying to catch up. Yeah, yeah. So so I, uh, that's uh, the industry is kind of a little weird right now, right? So uh, it's. Who knows what's happening? So a lot of people are are just sitting on their hands and um, figuring out what to do, right? I'm I'm lucky because I have a steady commission base, mm -hmm. and uh, so so I'm so I'm fine. So it's just whenever they're back with the barons, it's when I'll be back on, right? And I'm also working on yeah. uh, other things. And so this is all fine, and um, you know, can you hear that? Knock on wood, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, the variants are fun. They're, they're a lot of fun. And uh, I do a retail store. So they're, okay, maybe um, retail store variants. I did the, the last Ronin cover. I don't know if you saw that one. No. Uh, oh. I you had one of those. No. Yeah, yeah. The, the, um, the store just sent me a, a mock-up of the trade. So it's coming out in August. It's coming out next month. Right? Yeah, wow. If you drop Facebook and on my Insta, you'll, you'll find... Um, I don't know the story because it's top secret. They just gave me enough to do the cover, right? But it's, <laughs> it's a turtle and it has, and uh, the turtle has all the weapons, right? So it's okay. like, which one is it? Or is it a different character? Ooh, that's cool. So it's kind of yeah. neat. I'm looking at it now. One. I could drop one in after the fact for us. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was a fun cover. That's with uh, Vaulted Comics and Altuna. Okay. So yeah, so it's, it's like, like you know, I'm a comic store guy. Right, I'm sure mm -hmm. we all are. So whatever we do to, to help them out is, is what I'll do. Right. So yeah. I'm going to do a store appearance in August. Put on my mask. Right. Social distance. Spray <laughs> <laughs> <Where> everybody. <laughs> so that's, I'm waiting for the guy to break out the beekeeper helmet and just drop it on their head, like the and be the. And it was it hive or aim? Yeah, aim. <laughs> well, my wife just bought a bunch of these uh, the the face shields. Right? Oh really? Okay, hey, it was. Yeah. Don't be more comfortable, actually. I've seen some people walking around wearing them, like, because it's not right up on you. 
like oh, yeah. it seems like it would be more comfortable to wear actually yeah i mean I, like i feel like i should start doing flash dancing but you know it's, it's cool <laughs> <laughs> Some welding stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's like. But, but yeah, it's cool. Whatever. It's oh cool. man, this is cool. Cover for Gus Mock Shino Kaje. Yeah, How do you say yeah. that? I don't know. I just I just see it written. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with where it's inc- word, Mike. <laughs> that's incredible. I'm I'm ge- I'm guessing. I, yeah. That's the way I, I'm trying I'll to get this. In. So wow, I, I do, Peter. I want you to show. There's one you did right before the pandemic. The immortal. Uh, the Daredevil Immortal cover. Oh, I put these together though. Okay, I really like the uh, oh, oh yeah. Oh yes, I, I oh. love the Ventress cover because yeah, I, I had it because when we I showed it before we started. But yeah, yeah that, that Daredevil was fun. The Rom colored that. I don't get. Yeah, I, I just see people's names printed, so I'm gonna butcher. But Rom Fajardo, I think. It's it, but yeah, he did an excellent job. I was because because it was very um, a lot a lot a lot of textures, a lot of tones. Right? Yeah. So, as we head off to a colorist, it's like, oh, you know. But it's like he paint, he basically painted along with what I was doing, which is really, uh, and he added um, the, the, the metamorphosis between the two middle heads. Mm-hmm. He added those gotcha. things, like real creepy, right? Like tendrily. So I was like, that's a, that's, that's an artistic uh, choice, which I really appreciate. So but that's, uh, I would say this is probably of the, because Marvel had like 20 of these come out. This is probably yeah, this one is- of like three that I liked. Yeah, this like was the, the best one, no yeah. doubt about it. This was the best one. Yeah, yeah, because it's metamorphosis, right? Mm-hmm. The other ones, I, I don't know what direction the artist got, so I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't know. But they just say, see more like different shots of them, but they, they weren't like metamorphosizing. Is that the word? Morphing. Yeah. <laughs> well, <it is. laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. See, but this looks like you could become a statue or a toy. Like I, I would actually like buy this, like the, the amount in my library. Yeah, but yeah. This is that, fantastic. And the Ventress one was fun too. Ventress was all digital, so that okay. was a digital kick. I did Ventress. I did the uh, like Nightcrawler one. Mm, did, yeah, the Amazing Nightcrawler. Yes, Amazing Nightcrawler one, number one, I think, and uh, did a couple of uh, the, the Daredevil, Deadpool one, the digital. I was on the digital kick, but I wish I had done this one traditionally because a lot of people were asking about it. But I know working with Disney and some of these other uh, license owners, they're really nitpicky. They just ask for edits after edits and after edits. And there were edits on this. It's like a, you know, the opening is supposed to be the shape and the changes and change that. It's like the handle's a little wrong. It's exactly like, it's like, I don't, wow, okay, that's cool. So I knew going into working with Disney, they're going to be like that, which is fine. You know, this is, I've worked with them before. I, yeah. just know so, I didn't um, think about it. I did that officially. Yeah, definitely easier yeah. to change a digital image. So I guess, than that. when you worked on the Star Wars, yeah. So I did um, this. So when you work on a Star Wars book, it's a di- working with Disney. Yes, but, uh, yes, because um, they had to approve the images, right? So so okay. did, so Star Wars actually, the like Disney has to approve the likenesses and approve, which is different, which is weird, right? Because but the, I don't know. Yeah. How's it different with like Captain America matching the, the MCU cap, right? It's just different. Yeah. Disney is more involved in this stuff. I guess because yeah, but they're, it just they're, I, I don't know why, but it was just it was just that way. But the Star Wars people are huge into continuity, and so little things, little details. If you don't have them right, Star Wars fans will freak out. I'm one of them. I don't yeah. freak out about that stuff, but I constantly hear people talking about, oh, the, those hilts weren't correct, or the costume's a little wrong, yeah. or something yeah, like yeah. that, and. and and so I get, I get, I guess why they get a little bit anal about that, just because they don't there's, want there's any other people, right, Mike? <laughs> yeah, the other Star Wars fan. <laughs> so, I see he knows me already. That's the way you deal with me. Good work. <laughs> um, I love seeing the. I'm looking at your Insta right now. The black and white for the last Ronin too. So anybody who's um, who's checking that out, maybe uh, we'll put a, a photo of that too. But the black and white work before the color, really cool looking. Yeah. And then, First, because um, even though it's, uh, it's it's usually like only a couple day turnaround, it's still I'm just focusing on one image, right? Yeah. When you do an interior, sometimes it's like, can you do this whole book in two weeks? Can you do this whole book in a weekend, right? It's it's, it's like, okay, yeah. Right? Uh, but with covers, it's just one image that you can really just focus on. So there, I get to you know, it's more of what I want to put out. Yeah. Covers. Um, and I found. 
I didn't even know you did some James Bond covers. Oh yeah, the um, Bond. Yeah, yeah, those were all digital too, and I wish I did some of those um, traditionally. But uh, yeah, that, those were fun. It's it's um. Oh, those are cool. Yeah, so it was like uh, I, like I've always wanted to do the whole. I think um, Mike Cho does it a lot, where just like the background color is just kind of like the uh, negative space kind of the yeah, JPC right into the into the characters. So yeah, I was, I was messing around and um, yeah, and I, I like drawing. Uh, I I just love the characters, right? They're all diverse characters, and I just want to draw them in the, the powerful poses mm -hmm. you know like just not like just just strong right right so yeah that's m and uh i, I don't even know i don't even know the characters that well but um but they, they were they were fun to draw a lot of fun so that's cool know. those are great and and these are you did this and these are like issues like 11 12 13 like you didn't start at the series at the end you did like these variants and they're gorgeous i'd never seen them until i was looking into stuff you did yeah. and i was like whoa thanks i yeah, love the yellow one it's just a gorgeous the way you the way you did the the I guess negative space is what it's called and everything yeah. and used it it sticks out and then whoever this guy in green is I mean I don't want to pick a fight with him he's Luke Cage <laughs> uh, on steroids yeah. there so yeah yeah I don't the, the first... wait actually you know what I I think the guy in green is M I I don't know the new M the new M hmm. the new boss okay. But yeah, yeah, they they were a lot of fun to mess around with. Yeah, because I, I think it's I, fun. They just take the title over. Yeah, because like in the movies, uh, uh, I think Ray Fiennes took over the name of M from uh, Judy Dench. Mm. In yeah. the oh, yeah. exactly. I love I love your I love your ability to to for your art style to morph with the characters involved. Like in this particular case, you have some, some very sort of strack kind of regal characters and those, these covers really show that. And then I'm looking at this ghost rider commission that you did this painted ghost rider and it's right. like all fury and, and, and it's like very manic and there's, there's a lot of sort of color shooting off in different places. And I just, it's perfect for that character. These are perfect for this character. Um, it's it's rare to see an artist that that can that can sort of be a chameleon for the correct character. I don't know. I, I, people like Josh Middleton do it fairly well too. Um, but this, I'm looking at all this different stuff. These commissions from you, and it's really amazing. I love it. Did you hear that thunderstorm? I saw the lightning in the background. I was like, "Whoa!" It's Thor. You know, we're talking about Thor so much. Yeah, but it's, it's a good. I'm glad you you, you picked up on that, Mike, because um, I take a lot of care in storytelling, right? Even if it's in the cover. Let's we talk about that's why I picked the face to face, right? Because I want, I want, I want a story, right? I don't, yeah. I don't want like a like a like a, a vacuous brain, like like dead in the yeah. eye character pose. Uh, not interested, right? If you give me a story, right. so. so so whatever I'm tackling, and Tom Brevoort, I showed him a, a thing I did of Captain America back in the day, just a little sketch. And he's like, it looks great, except the face. It's not, tell, it's, it's not expressive. Like, there's a story there that you could have put in the face. And I was like, oh, you're right. Right? So, so to me, every opportunity is a story. Every choice is a story choice. Right? Like the way they stand, their faces, right? The, um, just where they're looking. Everything is a story choice that talks about the story and talks about the character. Right, so to me, um, so so one of the things I like to do with my commissions, and um, and I'm glad people do notice, is you give me a character, I'm not gonna throw it in like a pre-pose, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna really figure out what this character is about, and put the character in a pose and in a situation with background and expression, you know, close up, distance, whatever that really evokes that character, right? Like 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 you look at this character and it's like that's like of course. Like, of course, yeah. that character is standing that way. Of course, that character is jumping. Of course, that character has got the character has got that face, right? So, so when I do these covers, like like the, like the Ghost Rider, right? It's like I just want fury. I just want chaos. I just want you know just stuff flying around. A la Mark Teixeira, right? Yeah. The, the, mm. the, Teixeira is the baseball player. I get yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so so for me, <laughs> so these are like British, right? Proper, mm. right? But but they're spy. Yeah. Like blending into the background, right? It's like as spies do. So, so th those are the concepts I try to convey, and hopefully people pick up on it either literally or just on subconscious level. Hmm. What I'm trying to communicate, right? 
Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely there. I mean, I, I you know, I, I hadn't because I hadn't seen these James Bonds either. Now I'm comparing, literally looking at the Ghost Rider on my phone, looking at these James Bonds on my screen, going, "Man, this is the same guy. That's yeah. awesome." <laughs> yeah, whatever the story. It's, just, it's is, great. And, it shows through. It's it's fantastic. It's a testament to your talent, definitely. Absolutely. So one other thing I want to the you did this concept comic album with Jack the Radio. Um, yeah, right, right. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. So um, so George Hague and I go back. George, uh, he, he used to just he's he, one of my early um, people who got commissions for me. Wolverine. I don't remember exactly what it was. Like Wolverine. I did a bunch of Wolverines for him. And it turns out the guy's a musician, right? He's also an artist, but he's a musician. And then um, years later, he's you know we keep in touch. He comments, he orders stuff. Then then I'm watching TV, and he's on uh, he's on a late night show with his band, right? So it's like, dude, this. So he, so he so he contacts me. He says, "Hey, I'm gonna do a concept album, and uh, I'm gathering some artists." So it's so it's like me. I think uh, uh, I forget the names, but um, there, it's a. Pop- Yes. I have it listed on the side it, it, when you get to the article, but it's like Tommy Lee Edwards Tommy and Lee. That's, that's what I'm trying to think of. Tommy Lee, right? These and like, there's like 10 of you guys. They're all like, well, you guys are all well-known names. I recognize. I was like, whoa, this is awesome. Yeah. So, so I was already following George's music and I just bought the newest album creatures. You guys, it's not, it's, it's not a plug. I get nothing from it. It's, it's really great. If you like that, that kind of like a Southern kind of, you know, Southern rock ish sound, a folksy mm-hmm. sound, but like a little bit of contemporary, Anyway, so yes, yeah, so I was. Uh, I also listen to metal, and, and I, but, <laughs> I. I know I, I like your Facebook right. feed because it'll be like today's a testament sort of day, and then sort yeah, of yeah, exactly, exactly. That's, that's <laughs> Is that do you? So do you do you put on music when you're when you're doing artwork? Do you? Um, what's your sort of your your process? Do you uh, sometimes I'll you like music. silence or sometimes I'll put on uh, like like albums that I've just listened through so many times where I just don't listen. So like a bedroom sevenfold. Uh, which yeah. are the, the, the Beast of Bird? I don't even know the names anymore. But the, when the <laughs> when they first got it, when there was on, on the Madden sound, yeah, that, huh? so, so that album. So I just play because I don't I don't pay attention. It just it just pumps me up and it goes. But but these days I'm I'm, I'm more nerdy. I listen to audiobooks. So, nice. Right. <laughs> no. So, so that's, that's, but 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 I'll throw in testament. I'll throw in things here and there. Iron Maiden. I'm an English teacher day to day, so that, that yeah. warms my heart. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so so Jack the Raider, he asked me to do a couple pages. So, so I uh, I emailed my buddy Maury Hollow, who, who who colors a lot of the covers that I've been doing. So uh, we we jumped on, did a couple uh, pages. Uh, it's a really great idea. He takes the lyrics from his songs, right, and he transposes them into into comics. So I was like, that's an awesome idea. That was a pretty cool idea. So so I did. Yes. Um, the next thing I know, he's like, hey, dude, we uh, turned it into a video. So, so if you look at the video for Creatures, it's like he takes these panels and he sort of animates them, like the old Flash comics back when they were trying to do that thing. Oh, and yeah. So it's really cool that, uh, that to be a part of that. Yeah. I thought, yeah, I was very impressed. That when I was scrolling through your Facebook and you linked to it, I watched the video and I was like, that's so cool. And then it's, then it's the fun guessing game going, which one is your panel versus his panel versus... But then, yeah. like, I think you had your picture. I was like, dude, because you did... The style you chose is so different than your Mighty Avengers style, and then yeah. it it's more of uh, actually I couldn't tell you which, but like I love the cut the the images I saw that I was like okay, well those are your images because I think you did like a group shot. It's, I think it's is it the cover of the I, think uh, it, the I think it's because it's one of the few group shots. Right? Yeah, and I was like, give me a picture of the band members. So I'll put them mm-hmm. in there. So, so that's what I did, and then that's so so it's neat to see it. like hey, that's, I drew that. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> But that's really cool. And and you're primarily Marvel, but obviously you did James Bond, which is not Marvel. Did you do some DC as well? Yeah. uh, With the nature of the work, it's whoever gets to me first, right? Yeah. What I did was uh, I was able to do um, a Teen Titans run. Okay. So Rebirth after um, John Boyd did like three, four books. Oh, that's right. Probably like a year. So uh, that was fun too. So I so so the... uh, the the introduction of the new Aqualad, all right, Teen Titans six. Mm-hmm. That's me. I designed the costume. Again, I don't mess with it too much. So I just kind of like the costume from the, the classic. Uh, Young Justice idea, right? 
Mm -hmm. and then looked at the older Aqualad ideas and just kind of changed, tweaked it a little bit. Right, but uh, that's that's my guy. That's my design. Uh, but I think they've given them bread since then. Good luck. Which is you don't want to be that guy who somebody looks back fifty years from now and goes, "He's the one that messed up the costume." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like Electric Superman. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. like whatever they did to Poison Ivy in the nineties. What is that? With yeah, the, not the everybody did RJR with Mohawk Storm. You know, I mean, that that was yeah. a bold choice, but <laughs> that was a bold choice. It works. It works. Yeah, it does. But yeah, yeah. So, so um. So I, I've, I've done DC stuff, Teen Titans. Okay. That, was, that was a lot of fun with Ben Percy. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, if you guys, thank you, for, Corey, for being on with us. Uh, if you don't know, you can go check him out on Facebook and Instagram. Follow him there. It's uh, it's Koi Fam Art. Koi Fam Art. And, and actually, one thing I, I want to mention is I'm, I'm actually finally getting around to updating my website. Oh, good. I was Koi Koi Fam or Bam. Uh, uh um, dot com like like Mike Mike Miller it's actually Mike Miller but he answers to Miller okay but, uh, I answer the fam uh, Koi Farm dot com it's gonna have um it, it's people ask me like my process and stuff and how I do things so I'm gonna mm -hmm. have that up there I'm gonna create a form and just kind of I kind of pay it forward you know what I mean because one yeah. of the cool things in this industry is like nobody I haven't met any jerks because everyone's just so forthcoming and, and just willing to share. Right, so I, I want to share. Who wants to learn? Hey, I'll tell you, but let's make it efficient, right? I'm gonna have a website, and you guys just come there, and I'll tell you, tell you yeah. my process, and what I do, and stuff like that. So yeah, I love that stuff. I love seeing like artists talk about their process or mm -hmm. watch work, like watch it yeah. like a Twitch stream or right. like a quick, like you know, one of those sped up things where people like. I love watching that stuff. Yeah, I just, well, yeah the time, the, the time of, lapse. Right. So, so you saw like the black and white last Ronin thing, right? And then the shaded versions, because like. Like, why be secretive? Someone's going to find out. They're going to find out eventually, right? <laughs> you feel like that jerk that didn't tell them, right? <laughs> like anybody could duplicate it just by watching. Like, it's not. And I think also, too, for someone like you with so many different possible styles that you could go at, it's nice to see you do a painting. It's nice to see you do a drawing. It's nice to see you do, you know, something digital. And just to show the versatility and all the different ways that you approach the different media is really cool and i don't think a whole lot of people have the versatility you have not and i'm not knocking any other artists just you know looking at you specifically it's nice to see those different processes and how you approach those things differently as i look through this stuff it's all there thanks man yeah yeah it's uh, yeah. It's, uh you, do, you do what the, the project calls and what calls to you right you're an artist and sometimes you don't want to turn on distortion right sometimes you just want to play it clean yeah yeah you, play it clean. <laughs> you do right so yep it's true so yeah, so cool. So that's all. That's all I'm plugging for now. I'll have to come back and. Uh, yeah, we would love to have you back on at some point. It'd yeah. be great. Yeah, it's fun. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. So, guys, uh, once again, comicbookinvest.com is where you can catch the article. Uh, drops on Fridays, and you can catch it there. Uh, this is Three Comic Money. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed hanging out with uh, Koi. Is it Fam? Fam. 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 But Fum, is I apologize for butchering that for half the, no, uh, the entire no, show. That's not butchering. <laughs> okay. Butchery, that's not butchering. <laughs> uh, but thanks for being with us. Uh, hopefully you had fun. We had fun. We I learned so much about you that I did not know. Um, and I pre that's why I love doing these these things. Uh, and thanks again. So yeah, check out CBSI. Right. Uh, yeah. The last thing I read was uh, Comics Continuum. I think there have been a few more uh, new sites since then, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you really so Thank much you. for your time. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. All right, guys. Good talking to you. Talk to you soon. Peace out. Bye.